All right, so I have my shapes. Um, what about material or color? So we looked at this a little bit last lesson, so there's some interesting textures that you can apply. Um, you can even just use different colors. So if I go to my last port or last symbol up here, right? It's the, it's the shading viewport. So if I click on that, we're looking at our shading and right now everything is just kind of pinkish and that's really because of my background. So what I wanna do is I wanna click on these objects and I wanna start adding some materials. So a couple things. If your object is faceted, you can see the little squares on it, you can always right mouse click and hit smooth shape. You can also, on some objects, select them. If you want, you can use a modifier. And the modifier is this little, um, looks like a wrench. And one that's a good one, like we did the last lesson, would be um, to subdivide or subdivision surface. So if you click on that, it'll really smooth out, especially like your sphere. You can try it on this one too. You don't need to do this, but you know, by all means, you can give it a try. And I'll smooth that out. So right now I have some objects. I need to start arranging them, right? Placing them on the page in an interesting composition. Um, the idea here is you just go with it. You go with the flow. I have no idea what I'm making, and that's okay. I'm just gonna kind of arrange things, hopefully in an interesting way. And uh, if I like it, I'll go with it. If I don't like it, I'll change it. So if I select an object, don't forget, we can always pop into shading mode. All right, so this is the shading mode. So when you're in shading mode, it, it's not really showing you your lighting, right, or your atmosphere. And I'm gonna kinda use this at first just to take a look at this object. So this sphere right now has no material on it. If I hit new, I have a material. Um, if I wanna change the color, I can. All right, if I wanna change metallic, is it metal? I can take that slider and crank it up. Usually something's either metallic or it's not. Um, it's metal or it's not metal, but you can kind of go in between if you want. Um, specular is reflection of light, and then roughness. Think of how shiny it is or just how much the, the, the light kind of bounces off it. So you can see a low roughness. It's going to be almost like a mirror and a high roughness. It'll be kind of flat. Now, here's the thing. When you start playing with these settings, in this view, there's a fake um, environment, which is going to provide reflection for you. In this view, you're not going to see any of that stuff. If you want to enable certain things like reflections and soft shadows, you need to do that over in your camera settings. So we're gonna come over, actually not even your camera settings, it's more your render settings. So if you come over, it looks like a camera under render properties. I would probably tick off ambient occlusion. That's just area where light can't really get to as well. It's like where it, like crevices and cracks um, bloom. And I'd probably do screen space reflection. So if you want to have things reflect, you need to have that on. So now that I did that, if I come back over here and you know I take my roughness down, you're going to see ah that sphere is now reflecting this object. You don't have to do any of this. This is up to you. But it's going to give you a cooler look um, when you're working. All right. So there's a sphere. Um, by default, when you select an object and add a material to it, um, you have this, this principled PSDF. It's, it's basically approximates real world settings, right? It tries to look at, at objects in the real world and, and, and you can tweak these in to have it look like metal plastic. Um, there are other ones as well. So I'm just going to go over this and maybe I'll go over glow because glow is kind of cool too. So you can play with your settings and if nothing else, you might just want to say, hey, I, I, this is too much for me. I just want to add some basic colors and that's fine too. So colors or values are okay. And every once in a while, I can pop in your camera and start looking at this. So I can take this, add new. And remember, every time you add new, it, it assigns a specific material to something. Um, those materials are stored. So if you wanted, like, let's say this little curve to have the same material um, as the sphere, I can do that, all right? Um, just remember that when you do that, they both have the same material, so if you change the material later, um, it's gonna change both of them, which is, which is totally fine. So like if I took this, you can see as I change one, they're both gonna change. So just be aware of that. You can always add your own original materials, so that's, that's up to you. So you're gonna go through, and you're gonna start adding materials, and you can add textures, just like you did the last lesson, right? So the reason we did the last lesson was, so now, 
um, when you have these objects, you can add a material and you can add, and we talked about textures last week, I think. So we have all these textures that you can, you can play around with. Um, ultimately, you decide whether or not you want a texture or you want um, just flat colors. That's, that's entirely up to you. Also, keep in mind, you can always go back to your world. If I don't like this background setting or this color, I can change it, all right? Or if for volume, if I don't like the volume, I can turn it on or I can turn it off. That's, that's entirely up to you, all right? So you're just kind of going with the flow, all right? Hopefully you can create a, a pretty cool composition. Um, beyond this though, you also wanna think about lighting, right? Um, because truthfully and honestly, when you look through this, if you wanted to, you could take this background and take it all the way down. And you could take this volume and get rid of it or just take it, um, let's make it 0 0.001, like really almost not there. And, and what's gonna happen now is you're gonna have to add lights, all right? And you can always look in your scene collection. You have a default light. Um, you can see it here if you click on the light. These are the properties. You can change the color of the light, the power of the light. Um, let's go 20, all right? So if you have a really low light, can't see much, right? And you can build up lighting over time. So just like adding meshes, shift A, you can add lights. So pick a light, sunlight, spotlight, area light. Um, again, this is kind of a review and you can experiment with the different lighting as well as texturing, and you can really create an interesting composition, all right? Um, last but not least, this is something we didn't really talk about. Let me grab one of these objects. So by default, like I said, when you add a new material, it gives you this. Um, it's just the, the PSDF, and you can change these, and there is something called emission, and emission is glow. So if I just crank this from black to white, it's gonna have like a self-illumination, and you can change the color. Um, the problem is it is kind of capped off down here. Um, it only gets so bright. You can always do this. We can add a new shader and make it an emissive shader, so emission. And the cool thing with that, if I plug this in, I can take one and make it five. And you can see how much brighter it is. And you can come in here and you can add color. All right. So this is a pretty cool effect, like a cool glow effect, making the object actually kind of like a light. Um, so a lot of this is a review. Um, the new part would be making a line, but ultimately your job is to take your camera, frame your subject, think about your properties. Do you want a background? Do you not want a background? Um, and make a cool composition. The last thing I'm going to talk about is what if you wanted to bring an image and map it onto an object? How would you do that? So I'll look at that super quick and then you're off to create. So next, let's take a look at adding an image to an object. Okay, so let's real quickly look at how we can take an image and map it onto a surface. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to do this, but again, we're gonna keep this simple um, and you do not have to do this, but you might want to. So if you created an object and that object or that mesh has a UV, what you can do is if you come down to, again, I'm in the shading mode. If I come over here and I'm gonna add something and what I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add a texture. So you kind of looked at these last week, right? Um, but this time we're gonna add an image texture and place that down there. So my image texture, it, what I, would do here is if I wanted to, I would say, hey, let me bring in an image. Um, so I'm gonna go to open, and obviously you need to have an image or a picture to use. Um, so I'm gonna go in, I downloaded some some fabric textures that look kind of interesting. Um, so maybe I'll grab this, and I'll open the image. All right, so now this is taking an image, and as long as I have a UV map on this, I can go color to base color, um, and I'm gonna take the metallic off this, and you can see this a little bit better. Um, but now I have that image mapped onto my sphere. And speaking of mapping, um, you can see in here, it, it's, it's gonna ask you like what 
direction you want to map, you can you can leave it go. Right now it's at the flat. You can have a box projection. Um, and some of these might take a little bit of time. So you got to give your computer a second. Um, sphere probably makes sense for that one because it is a sphere. Um, so if it's got a UV map, you could probably just let it go, but you're more than welcome to, to play around with these settings. So I'm just going to stick oops, with um, flat. And you can see there's my sphere. And if I don't like the angle, you can always just rotate it. It's just a sphere, right? Um, so I can combine that, and I, I could still keep it metallic. Maybe it's a shiny looking looking sphere. Um, emission, you could play with that, right? Maybe it's got a little bit of a glow to it. Um, again, you don't have to do this, but if you want to add an image, by all means, give it a shot. Um, a lot of interesting things you can do. There's a ton of tutorials online. Um, again, you, you, you make what you make. This is your last project. I know it's been tough to work, um, from home on your laptops and things aren't ideal. So just get in there, create something, have some fun with it. Um, it's abstract. So you're, you're just making what you want. There's no right. There's no wrong. Play with lighting, play with textures, create some objects, and you can really create an interesting, um, composition. All right. So you want to, Add as much stuff to this uh, as you can and make it look as good as possible. And when you're done, you're just going to render this out and you're going to submit it to Canvas. So um, render image. Wait a sec. There it is. You're going to take this image and you're going to save as. Call it what you want. And then save it and then submit it to Canvas. Um, if you have any questions see me. Okay. Let me know. And I will try to get back to you. Um, I know some of us have some issues with our laptops and I, I don't know, my computer works a little differently than yours. So if you do have an issue, um, like a texture isn't working, uh, shoot me an email and I will give you a video response and show you how to, how to make things work. All right. So happy creating abstract design.